So, I have this HP multimeter here. Uh, and it has a few problems. Uh, one of the big problems is that this battery is missing. It's not really going to be calibrated without it. Uh, it came loose within shipping. Not really my fault. And then we have this transformer. The actual original transformer I kind of blew the ass out of. Because this was originally set to 100 volts. Which we can see down here. Uh, it was originally set to 100 volts instead of 240, resulting in the transformer blowing up quite quickly. So, funny thing is, is on the back, it says that it's 240, and instead of 100, but it was 100. So yeah, we've got to be more careful in the future. So I'm thinking of putting in a new transformer uh, before I even try to fix this battery problem and calibrate the machine. Uh, because no point in putting in a new battery and trying to calibrate it if we don't have power. So, so I made a new transformer for it. Quite a horrid transformer to be honest. But it will work. The thing is, I think I made this transformer a bit incorrect compared to how it probably should be made. Because normally if you make a transformer uh, then, okay, for, let's see here, what is what. This here is the analog power, this here is mains wiring, and here's the digital coming out of the side. A bit weird, but it kind of works. Uh, building a transformer is actually not that hard, you just start out with a toroidal core or other. So you start out with something like this. So this here is a big ferrite brick with some paint on, on top of it. Kinda works. A good base. Kinda large as well, but technically overkill for this application. Because this thing kinda draws 25 watts. And this could probably deliver like... But no. 200? Okay, it depends on the frequency, but it means frequencies. Probably like 200 watts. It's a bit overkill. Uh, the thing is, I kind of missed a few details when making this transformer, so I started out by winding on all the wiring for the mains, so putting that in the middle, or in the center of the transformer, or on the inner layers of the transformer, uh, and okay, that kind of works, it's typical for how you build a transformer. <laughs> uh, then I went, so I pr practically redesigned the same transformer as is originally within this, except toroidal instead of an e-core. But I kind of forgot one thing. Uh, this is going to have a heck of a lot of common mode noise, because it originally, because I originally looked at the original transformer, and it's center tapped. And I was thinking for a long while, why is it center tapped? Like, do they need it? Is it noise performance or something like that? And the answer is yes, it's noise performance. They're using the center tap because the center tap is connected to chassis. Meaning that they use the digital, all the digital wiring within the transformer as a shield between mains and the analog side. And this transformer here doesn't do that because I kind of winded this on and then the digital. So the digital does not provide any protection for the analog. Should have wanted them, wanted them on in the reverse order, or in the opposite order, or the correct order, uh, because this here is going to have a heck of a lot more common mode noise than the original instrument is intended to have, because the digital is kind of this period here. It's, it's winded over on this side, and the analog is, well, it goes kind of from all the way over here to, well, all the way under until it reaches here again. So yeah, it's it's not a good transformer. Probably need to rewind wind this in the future. Uh, but before I settle down and spend another week winding a transformer, because that's apparently what it takes. Uh, just a piece of advice: don't wind your own transformers. It's it's not hard. It just takes a heck of a lot of time. Yes, unless you have the proper tools. Uh, so, first I'm gonna try to see if I can fit it in here, so, because I couldn't just, like, put it, but I could technically not just put it like that, because 
smallest shock on this and this capacitor is going to fly loose so that doesn't work and I can't just lay it down here because well yet again it's gonna scramble around it's gonna kick this transformer out of its place it's probably gonna damage some of this in transit and these are probably not gonna survive either so <coughs> I need some form of a jig and there are these two holes that held in the original transformer they should probably do like the original was using them and this is about as heavy as a droidal instead of e core so it's a bit different but so what I was thinking is I'm trying to make a plate between here that goes up and it has an L bend to it and then it goes over into this because the thing is here it's actually a hole if I can get that on camera it's a hole here and I'm thinking I could stick it something out into this hole so I have practically a piece of metal or something going from these holes over here over to the hole over here so it's gonna be some triangle shaped piece of either plastic acrylic or something like that uh, I don't know how well acrylic is gonna work for that but that's my idea at least I think it would be easier to just buy a piece of sheet metal and bend put a screw hole in it and well screw this in place or just use like zip ties or something like hey it's cheap or rather hey it's gonna work because really what is this gonna do other than just being a multimeter it would have been nice if there was a corresponding hole over on this side uh, because then I could take a rod and feed from that side over to this side I, think I could do that that could probably work I'm gonna see if I have a rod over here somewhere. Where's my rods? There is one. Here. So, something like this. This here is from the printer. Placing it like that. That didn't really work. That wanted to roll out. So, yeah, placing something like this. So, it sits through a hole on that side and for a corresponding hole on this side. Sadly, there isn't any hole on this side. Okay, there is one for the ground lead, but I'm not gonna use that. So, I could just buy a rod. Drill, like a hole here, a hole on this side, corresponding holes on this side, and just have two rods laying over. Because then I can put practically one rod going like that over the transformer and the other rod, rod on, on, over on the other side and then you zip tie it in place that could work because hey zip ties aren't conductive and as long as it's not pulled tightly it's or exceedingly tightly it's undamaged the transformer that could work now I understand why people record stuff you get to listen to yourself talking about stupidity and then realizing there's better solutions. That's why you should probably should record stuff. So okay, this is gonna be the first video for today on the bench I think. And it's gonna be crap as hell. Sorry for wasting your time. But really, this is an interesting multimeter. Uh, or rather, this is a good small multimeter. It is the HP, what is it, is it called? 3478 a And it's quite good. It has probably all the features you would need. It has a decent voltage reference. It has like a nice input hybrid. It has, well the hybrid is on, down under here. It is, I don't really know, and it does have these really nice Kodo relays. I think they're Kodo. They might not be Kodo because that's actually a company and not the technology. But these are probably shielded relays, so, and that's probably a read relay or something. Sorry, relays aren't my strong side. Sorry, so I could be totally wrong about this, but they're probably relays, and they're probably small signal relays. And this shield here, according to what I've heard from one of the designers behind this multimeter, uh, this was needed in the prototype, but not needed in production, because the first that's not the processor, here's the processor, down in the dark. Uh, the first processor they used uh, was noisy, so I think it was this, which is weird that the shield ends here, but 
hey, sensitive stuff is over here. So this is just the input. The sensitive actual analog stuff is over here. That this imposes a bit of noise on the input doesn't matter all too much, except low noise, which is kind of what it matters. But here the analog voltages are going to get down to something closer to this voltage instead of like the high input voltages because your input is typically rather low impedance inside of here or low impedance and low impedance it's low impedance to your product but not low impedance into the instrument so two different types of impedances or actually it's the same type but depending on how we, we how we look at it so yeah but here because it's smaller voltages it's more sensitive and prone to noise technically and that's why they needed this shield here but the production parts that are used have an internal capacitor on the top of its chip and what that does is practically shielding the ship from emitting as much noise and also meaning that you need less bypass capacitors around it I probably probably they selected it for less bypass capacitance around the chip because I don't see a heck of a lot of bypass capacitance here if I'm gonna be honest do we see anything? We see that little capacitor up there. C512. Yeah, that's about it. And then there isn't any more capacitors here. So, yeah. And without this battery, I'm going to need to recalibrate this. And no, I'm not going to put in a super cap or something. Even though it would be fun to put in a super cap. Because. Super cap is kind of large, or this super cap is kind of large. Uh, this is just a ch cheapy from eBay, 500 and something farads, 2.7 volts. And um, yeah, interesting, not perfect, but works. Or oh, actually, I don't know how long this is gonna last and actually survive, but that's off the point. It works now, and it's probably gonna work tomorrow. <sighs> probably. Otherwise, it's really crap. And okay, what more do we have inside of here? This is actually a bit funny that they use. So, this is the wire that sends data from here and then it sends it into a transformer. So, you have probably one turn in one direction and then it has multiple turns which this chip senses. I think it's that chip. It could be this chip. Who knows? I haven't designed this. <laughs> and I was actually thinking while. Well, while I'm actually in this and actually changing the transformer that now that I actually figured out a good way of, of mounting a new transformer and I can always buy new rod probably threaded rod because the advantage with threaded rod is that zip ties can bite into that a little and not have the transformer sliding back and forth over here freely which would be bad Okay, this is technically silicon wire, so it wouldn't be too bad, but hey, rather not have a sleeping transformer. So what more do we have? This is a nice capacitor. Probably really expensive. And its value? Well, it's probably, okay, it's actually 100 volts DC. I didn't expect this to be 100 volts. Or do I just read that incorrectly? It's 10%. 100 volts. I don't think I'm reading that correctly. Weird. Maybe they just want to overspec it so it survives. Who knows? So, yeah. And then they have a small oscillator up here in the corner hiding. That's gonna impose a bit of noise. And it's, I do think it's funny that they have one processor on this side and then practically an equally powered processor on this side. Because they seem to have the same part number. Because this is a B8718 and this is a B8724. Okay, they were actually different. Yeah. Okay. Yes, I actually should read stuff and not just toss things out of nothing. And I think this is actually the calibration storage area. This is a ROM. This is, I think this is like a read protect desk RAM or something. I think it was this. Or it could be one of these other small ones around here. But it would be fun if it's this, because it's huge. And then over here we have our GPIB port. Probably never gonna use that. Maybe I actually might be using that. Unless I find a way to like get serial data out of this. Maybe you can get it from one of these. Maybe this is just serial. 
to giving out the exact value or something. Who knows? I haven't designed this after all. And yeah, slug tuned or slug. No, they're not slug tuned. These are uh, tantalum capacitors. Probably they look like tantalums. So in other words, high polarized capacitors. What more do we have? This is a weird chip. I wonder what that chip is doing. These yellow ones is just pigment within the chip carrier, so it's nothing special there. Well, if only more chips were pigmented like this, it looks nice. Okay, it could be ceramic. No, it's it has another type of plastic, so it's nothing super special there. And no, it's not so much interesting inside of here. Here's a small filter cap for mains voltages. This here, I'm probably gonna try to do something with because not that I can feel metal through that, but hey, putting on a second layer of uh, of heat shrink isn't really gonna hurt. What more do we have? It would be fun to bring these to the front of the instrument. And yeah, for everyone wondering, why would it be fun? Well. Okay, technically it could be on the back and I could just have some wires hanging off into wherever I need them. So yeah, could work. Anything more? I've been recording for 16 minutes, 17 actually, soon. Dang, time flies. So yeah, so I'm gonna fix the transformer. So two bars inside of here, going all the way over here. A fretted rod. I'm gonna buy that for next to nothing practically. Uh, drill some holes, uh, use some nuts to actually keep it, the rods in place, and then just zip tie this to the rods before soldering all of these funny wires into place. So yeah, that's gonna be fun. It's gonna be hacky as hell, and I'm probably gonna have one of the few HP multimeters with a toroidal core transformer in it. I'm also probably one of the few to actually blow up the transformer in one of these. So yeah, nothing to be proud of. And yeah, this falling out, like when I received this, I thought that, okay, I'm going to change this battery. So I heard something rattling around within it, and I thought, dang, that couldn't be good. Never good when stuff rattles around, and of course it's the battery, so... I bought this, and it was calibrated. And then I get it, it's not calibrated. Like, thanks. Uh, really. And I'm not gonna send it back had it for over a year now and really showing that I'm procrastinating too much like come on I should have fixed this by now but sometimes you just wait for better weather after all I do have many other projects I could probably do some like take this rod and actually thread it uh, because that wouldn't be too hard just a rod like this end it's for it's for a clip spring to hold it in place came from a printer so yeah probably gonna do a teardown of another printer in the future and steal some more parts from it because I do have another printer up here and also some six track uh, DVD player that I thought was uh, like something else but ah, what you get at flea market it's actually quite nice to get stuff at the flea market just to tear it down because like a printer that you buy for could be five bucks uh, yeah it's kind of worth it in parts because there's at least one stepper inside of that it is after all uh, an inkjet print in inkjet printer I need to learn English uh, or learn to pronounce English so yeah what more do I have inside of this room who knows? I do have a lathe here. I'm gonna do a project with this. I'm currently tearing it down. So yeah. Small lathe. Quite nice. This wouldn't turn this easily when I got it. So yeah. It's currently in renovation. And it's gonna be a lot nicer when I'm finished with it. Because I'm thinking of replacing this with a stepper and... Because turning this around by hand. Okay, it works, but I'm thinking of changing this to a stepper, and for all of you thinking that this actually doesn't move, 
it just moves very slowly. It's about one millimeter of travel per revolution. And then I think of having this rod also stepper controlled. And then just have a digital readout on the spindle. Or not digital readout, more have like an, a read switch or something so that it. Dang, English, come on. Uh, I'm gonna have a sensor probably to measure the spindle speed so I can time this and this according so to the spindle speed so I can practically have a CNC lathe cheap mount CNC lathe but come on it's better than nothing because uh, the the compound set for this lathe originally is crap so it uses practically this that's held into place underneath here I cannot really get through the hole because it's too large but it sits from the under, but it comes up from the underside and sits against the lip, and then you have the actual compound sitting on top of this, making a nice sandwich. But the thing is, to change the position of this compound, you need to turn this all the way off from its base. So yeah, and that's not fun. And then it's also loosey goosey like hell, so it's not perfect. Because, well, you can set this up, but or you can set it to roughly the right angle, and then you probably need to take this off again. And when you take this off, you might upset the angle, but you need to take it off to be able to tighten it down. Because if you don't tighten it down and start milling, or start lathing, or cutting, then yeah, it's going to be off. <laughs> but then it's going to shoot itself off practically. Or it's this is gonna it's gonna turn here when it starts milling because of the forces so you need to tighten it down but to tighten it down and you're gonna upset the angle not a perfect solution that's why i'm going to have this stepper controlled and have this stepper controlled and then always have have it engaged so that this is controlling the actual saddle back and forth instead of doing it manually like but instead of doing it manually like this it's going to be computer controlled and this means that i can instead of setting the compound i can just tell it to cut a taper of x degrees and it will do that which is a lot nicer than what it currently is so yeah that's one of my many projects or many projects i don't have too many i just have a full bench of projects i need to clean up in here after all or i should finish this video it's already soon 25 minutes long but yeah, I'm gonna fix this, I'm gonna put in two uh, threaded rods, and I'm gonna zip tie this into place, and see if that works. Uh, I should probably test this uh, transformer first, to see if it even works. <laughs> it should work, I have done a few tests on it, I should probably test it a bit more thoroughly. And probably place this back into its position. And yeah, this is how it is when you have a tiny one. So yeah, welcome to my tiny lab that I need to clean, because this is how it ends up. When you don't clean your lab, it's stuff everywhere. No, that's why this is on, because it's freakingly cold in here, and yes, that's a lazy cutter. So yeah, I'm going to finish this, and then it's off to the next project, which is to build an r 2 DAC, which is what I need this for. Yeah, I could probably use something like this Unity meter. I could probably use something like this meter, which is a little bit better precision. Like, this is almost as good as this one. Almost. Not as good, but almost. This is like two dig digits better, so this is like 100 times higher resolution. This is like... That's three digits. That's four digits. And this is six digits. Technically, five and a half digits, because physics or statistics or is it just math who knows it's logical in if you know what it's <laughs> it's logical so yeah i should probably finish this video before i'm a fool of myself so yeah so hopefully this project comes around nicely and i get that transformer into place that we will see about have a nice day